Hey guys, it's Lawrence from Outer Cosplay, and today I'm gonna show you guys how to make your own samurai armor. All right, so we're gonna start off with using eight millimeter EVA foam first, and I'm gonna make the helmet first. The pattern's down below, so you guys can check it out. This helmet pattern is pretty simple, so here I'm just taking it and transferring it onto the foam like so. Don't forget to mirror the pattern. So these marks I'm making, they're not meant to be cut. Instead, they're registration marks so that when you put the two seams together, you'll get a nice seamless finish. So we're gonna finish tracing the rest of the pattern and we should have something that looks like this. And with a sharp utility knife, we're gonna go ahead and cut out the pieces like so. So this edge that I'm pointing to right here, we're going to cut at an angle and create a beveled edge. Okay, and here are all the pieces already cut and put together. You can kind of already see the shape of the helmet. These back pieces, I use the laser just because there's a ton of details. You don't have to do this. Actually, I recommend you don't do this. You can skip this part. But if you do, you can drill these holes using a Dremel, which I will show you later downstream. Okay, so for those of you new to foam smithing, the glue we like to use is barge contact cement. So we're gonna take this, brush it on both sides of the seam, like so, and let that dry before we put the two seams together. And if you've never worked with this stuff, trust me, it is a game changer. Oh, and here's a hack I learned from Senpai Ted. You can use a blow dryer to speed up the drying process. So once both edges have been applied with contact cement and it's dry, go ahead and put it together like so, and you'll see it just, it just sticks together like magic. And we're gonna do that for that bill piece of the helmet as well. And the bevel edges come together to create that peak that we see right here. Okay, so this part is optional because not everyone's gonna have a rotary tool, but round edges are hard and they're usually jagged when you cut with just a utility knife. So having a rotary tool just like this one helps smooth those edges out. And that's what I'm doing right here. So once we're done with that, we're gonna take that and position it on the helmet accordingly and mark the position with the Sharpie. To connect the two pieces of foam, we're gonna use a good old contact cement. So once you have the bill piece on, we're gonna have a little extra on the helmet. It's not a big deal. We're just gonna go ahead and cut that off with a utility knife like I'm doing right here. Okay, so here comes this back piece, like I said. Optional design. If you did it with the holes, we're gonna lace them up and I'll show you guys how to do that later in this video. But if you don't have the details, you can just go ahead and do a mock position with duct tape and use contact cement to glue it all into the helmet. Then with everything done right, you should have something that looks kind of like this. So we're basically done with the helmet. You can add whatever you want, horns, embellishment, ornamental stuff, and that's up to you. Now let's go on to the next step, which is the armor. Here I'm making the neck piece, and it's pretty simple. That's just the design right here. I'm gonna cut it out, and it looks something like this. And here's the pattern for the chest piece. It's gonna comprise of two pieces, the top and the bottom. We're gonna take this pattern and transfer it onto six millimeter EVA foam. And all those holes that I'm tracing right here, they're gonna need to be drilled with a Dremel or a drill press so that we can lace the tacit later on. So just like before, once we have all the patterns transferred onto the foam, we're just gonna cut it out with a utility knife. Okay, so here's that Dremel setup I was talking about earlier. Now you don't need this setup. If you have a drill press, you can do the same thing. You just wanna make sure you drill the holes where the patterns indicate. And of course, you wanna be careful, watch your fingers. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, ask someone that is to do it for you. So we're gonna do that for all the holes of this costume. And there's a lot of holes to drill for this costume. So this pattern is pretty simple. The front and back piece are exactly the same. Now the side piece is gonna depend on you, the user. So here I'm measuring it out on my body and seeing how it fits. So a good tip is you wanna overestimate and you wanna make sure it goes almost around your back completely. The next thing we're gonna do is the shoulder straps and that's what I'm doing right here. So once you have those patterns traced and cut out, you should have something that looks like this. Now this part is optional, but if you want that flare or collar that I have, then go ahead and follow this step. Here I'm taking that shoulder strap and curving it and tracing the collar like so. Okay, and if you do it correctly, you should have something that looks like a banana. I'm kidding, it's up to your design. So here I'm taking that banana piece and lining it up to the shoulder piece like so, but I see a flare that I don't like, so what I have to do is I'm going to have to bevel one of the edges of the shoulder strap so that it sits flush, and you'll see what I'm talking about right here. Okay, so once I'm happy with how the two pieces sit together, I'm gonna apply 
contacts met like usual. So the rookie mistake is people don't wait long enough and they put the two edges together and it just comes apart. So you wanna make sure you give it enough time and make sure it's dry and tacky to a touch before you put the edges together. Okay, and if you do it correctly, you should have something that looks like this. And like I said, it's optional, but I definitely think it's cool to check out and play with. But this is a little bit more of an intermediate level. So if you just wanna make an armor, you can go ahead and skip this part. Okay, and here's a quick mock-up of the armor on my body. I use duct tape to hold the side pieces to make sure those pieces are appropriate, and they seem to be, so let's move on to the next part. Okay, so now comes the laborious part. So everything from the shoulder part to the tacit, they're all the same pattern. So we're just gonna take that, transfer it to the foam, and cut it out. You just have to do that multiple, multiple times. Now, you can skip these extra details that I have right here because the pattern is actually just a square. So if you don't want to do that, like I said, you can skip this part. But for me, since I've made this armor multiple times already, I want to do something different. So that's why I'm putting this spin on it. And if you guys are feeling inspired, go ahead and do your own spin on it too. So here I'm figuring out the length of cord I need to lace all of these pieces together. Now you don't have to do that because I'll have that in the pattern. So if you guys check that out, you guys can just go ahead and measure out the length and cut accordingly. So once again, I'm just lacing it to my own design. You guys can do it whatever way you want. I'm starting with an X on top followed with two loops through the bottom. And it's really hard to describe with words, so if you just watch the video, you guys would know what I'm talking about. Okay, and if you follow my lacing pattern, you should have something that looks like this. Okay, so I went ahead and used blue just to match the color scheme that I'm going for. You're gonna need a lot, a lot of this. I think you need three packets of 100 feet. So basically 300 feet of parachute cords. So one thing you'll notice when you cut paracords up is the ends will tend to fray. I think most, t most fabric tends to fray. But anyways, when you're using shoelaces, they have these things called aglet. I, I think they're called aglet, but anyways, we're gonna make our own aglets using some scotch tape. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna cut a long strip of scotch tape and make aglets according to the number of cords I need. For example, if I have 10 strips or 10 lace I need, I'll use 11 aglets. And the trick is to cut in the middle so that when you have the cords made, both ends have aglets. It's a lot of aglets. So once you're done with the paracord, whoo, pat yourself on the back. You're basically done. We're just gonna lace the armor together and you can start wearing it. But if you're like me and you wanna go the extra mile, I'm gonna use a wood burner to put in those details like so. Now this part is completely extra. I just did this part on my laser machine to cut out all these little details so that I can put it onto the chest piece. Now you don't have to do this, of course. But here's your armor with all the details and Plasti Dip, hence the black look. You're probably asking what's Plasti Dip. If you're new here, Plasti Dip is a rubberized coat. It seals the foam up so that it takes paint way better. I highly, highly recommend do not skip the Plasti Dip part. So once all the foam pieces have been sealed with Plasti Dip, I went ahead and hit it with some red spray paint. All right, and then everything looks pretty darn good, except the edges have not been painted red yet. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use Liquitex acrylic paint and brush on those edges like so. Okay, there's nothing to it. We just have to do this for all the pieces. Okay, and once you do that, you should have something that looks like this. Okay, and now I'm just gonna use some black acrylic to put in some extra details on the collar piece and I'm gonna apply it like so. And of course I went at the extra mile. I went ahead and used some gold just to add a gold accent onto the armor. All right, and I did the same thing to the helmet and here you can see the extra embellishments I added to the helmet. Okay, and if you did the detailed pieces like I did for the helmet, we're gonna lace it all together like so. Don't be discouraged, these detailed pieces are optional. And here, I'm just assembling the tacit onto the chest piece, like so. 
And like I said, these other pieces are optional. So go ahead and use your creativity and do whatever you want with this. All right, and with everything put together, we should have something that looks like this. All right, and that's it for this tutorial. That's how you make a samurai armor using EVA foam and parachute cords. Now I showed you steps that are way more complicated than what you have to do, but hopefully that inspires you to take your own spin with this pattern. All right, and with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.